Ever since the publication of the fictitious novel, The Da Vinci Code, and ever since we discovered the Gospel of Thomas and the Nag Hammadi writings, the concept of canon has been front and center in this debate. In this chapter five, we're gonna look at the New Testament canon. I'll look at the Old Testament canon in a later chapter. But canon is simply the concept of what books do we recognize as a church that God wrote? Which books carry divine authority? Now, let me clarify something before we get into any of the discussion. Constantine and his mommy had nothing to do with the canon. No matter how many times you hear that, the historical factual data never says that. Constantine and his mom had nothing to do with canon. The Council of Nicaea was about the relationship of God the Father to God the Son. Constantine did not invent the doctrine of the Trinity. Okay, so push that aside. If you use someone say that, just it's simply not factually true. It's just, it's made up. Well, what gave rise to the concept of canon? There are several things. One is that the apostles started to die. While the apostles were alive, they were the ones that would determine what Jesus said and did. When they died, they needed to have a way to know, well, is this true or not? You had the rise of persecution. And if you're being persecuted for being a Christian, for even owning a Bible, you need to make sure that you really have the right books in the Bible. And you have the whole issue of false writings. Somebody writes a, a, a book, First Clement or the Didache. Well, is it authoritative? Do we read it? Do we include it in our canon or not? So there were several things historically that gave rise to the canon. So how did the church go about recognizing which books were authoritative? Well, it appears that there were three tests. The first test was the test of apostolicity. In other words, who wrote it? Did an apostle or a friend of an apostle, Luke, write it? If so, it was accepted as authoritative. This is one of the reasons why the book of Hebrews had a little trouble being accepted in the canon, because we don't know who wrote it. So authorship was a big deal. The second test appears to be orthodoxy. Does this new writing agree with the teaching of the books that we have already accepted? This is why James had trouble getting into the canon. If you don't interpret it properly, he contradicts Paul. And the third test was Catholicity. The church as a whole decided what books were authoritative. And we often hear that, well, two or three scholars off in the corner made these decisions. That's simply not true. The church as a whole made these decisions. So you can see why books like 2nd and 3rd John had a little trouble getting into the canon because they're short letters written to specific churches and may not have been spread to other churches in other countries. So those are the three basic tests of how a book would get into the canon. And let me just mention again the Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas was dug up around 175 to 180 AD. So it fails the test of apostolicity. Thomas didn't write it. It fails the test of Catholicity because we didn't know about it until 175 AD. And it miserably fails the test of Orthodoxy. In the last saying in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says that he's going to turn Mary into a man so she can go to heaven. I don't think that belongs in the Bible. I hope you don't either. So anyway, in this chapter, we're going to look at this whole issue of the New Testament canon.